one and all, once again to Exploring Arda, a Tolkien-centered podcast where I'm your host, Jackson, and I go through a bunch of Tolkien's works other than Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. So you have obviously <laughs> been through all that. You know the intro very well, probably by now. Uh, and this episode is a little bit shorter, uh, but this is pretty much the almost like kind of like the overview of what I read uh, last year, and then pretty much I'm going to read off the list of what I have uh, for now, which is a very long list of the potential books that I will be covering entirely for the show, like in it, in, a, in its entirety, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, just kind of like a reflection of like kind of like what we read in the past year, but also what we, well, I should say what I plan to read uh, in this year and then the coming years, which is going to be a long time until it's actually, you know, done with the show. So um, I'm very excited that I've been doing this pretty much year. I actually started recording uh, in January, started posting in January on this app called CastBox. So if you guys ever have CastBox, you can uh, go over there and listen to the very first episodes, or you can just go back on, you know, YouTube and kind of scroll through the whole playlist. But I did begin recording on January, and I think it was January 3rd, which hopefully, hopefully, I'll be able to upload it today <laughs> on the 3rd, uh, which is actually Tolkien's birthday, so that's uh, pretty cool. <laughs> I think that's pretty much why the reason why I started posting on January 3rd, so happy birthday to Tolkien <laughs> and all that fun stuff. So uh, it's been, you know, a whole year, so I'm kind of excited about that, and uh, pretty much for this year, and I'll be reading off of my little list here, uh, we of course, read through the huge story of the Silmarillion. Uh, that was a huge uh, feat, I suppose, that I managed to actually do. Uh, it's actually really incredible that I finished the whole thing in a year, which means, like, you know, reading it out loud and giving summaries and actually having, like, little separate videos about, you know, some of the figures that I think are cool and, like, obviously the review that I had. So it's really incredible that I actually finished that uh, within the year. <laughs> I didn't really think it would. Obviously, I didn't finish, like, a Calabeth, which is, you know, the, the Fall of Numenor, but that is because I will be reading the actual book, The Fall of Numenor, to kind of end it all, but more extensively. So I'm actually really excited for that because I uh, haven't read fully all the way, you know, through Fall of, uh, fall of Numenor, so we'll, uh, we'll see how that <laughs> turns out. Um, a lot of plans for that as well, so. Uh, I also read through Smith of Witten Major. That was uh, a fun tale. Uh, that was really cool about um, pretty much... Uh, it's pretty much just like knowing that there is adventure even in like the small villages, you know. Um, obviously this was with, you know, the great cake and the big, you know, and the main cook guy and he finds this fairy land and whatnot and comes back and tells the tale you know, that there's fairy lands and, and whatnot, and then there's, you know, elf stones and things like that. Very, very enchanted story, which I definitely enjoyed, uh, I, I guess, like, rereading it, I suppose. But it was it was a really fun story. Uh, we also covered uh, Farmer Giles of Ham, uh, the ordinary farmer who rose up to a, an, I'll say, like, an accidental <laughs> incident where he actually ends up not only, like, coming face to face fighting the dragon but just like kind of getting that courageous spirit up and proving that even like the simpler you know normal regular folk can rise up to a challenge and end up like like him uh actually becoming like the lord of the lands pretty much you know like the ruler that just because he actually befriends the dragon instead of slays it so a very interesting story on that one and lastly of course we did letters from father christmas for this december uh, well, I should say this past December, uh, we did that for Christmas, and that was uh, a fun, fun tale of learning about Father Christmas and all of his helpers and workers and all of their little shenanigans that happens with, you know, all the presents being spoiled or the goblins attacking. Very fun stuff, and of course, with the whole imagination of keeping up the Christmas spirit. It was a, a thrilling and grand tale, <laughs> so... Yeah, but along like the long list that I have, it was actually pretty decent. I uh, got four done this year, and of course the Silmarillion took uh, the bulk of of the year. So we'll see how I spread out the other um, 
stories here. Um, and I'll just be reading off the list here. And some of them I've read and some of them I haven't. Um, but I will be reading off the list here just to say that this is what I have planned for the the whole of the show and how I <laughs> how I read through it. I'm not quite sure yet, but I will be planning it out. So uh, along the list here it says Baron and Luthien. First one, obviously. Fall of Gondolin. Children of Hurin. Fall of Numenor, which is next, actually. Uh, the Book of Lost Tales 1 and 2. Uh, the Lays of Valerian, Shaping of Middle-Earth. Lost Road and Other Writings. The, oh, I think I have, yep, Unfinished Tales. It's on there, too. Uh, the Hobbit, which is going to be a while. <laughs> it's going to be more toward the, <laughs> the end of the show, obviously. Uh, the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings will be at the very end. Uh, also on the list is Sir Gawain in the Green Knight. Pearl, Sir or Orfeo, The Adventures of Tom Bombadil, Dwarf Random, The Legend of Sigurd, Story of Calervo, Leaf by Neagle, On Fairy Stories, Finn and Hengist, Mr. Bliss, the Monsters and Critics and Other Essays, The Fall of Arthur, uh, The Beowulf Translation and Commentary, The Homecoming of Beotnoth, um, and then The Histories of Middle-Earth uh, 6 through 12. And then obviously Lord of the Rings is the very last one. Um, there's a lot of those lists that, um, like for instance, the histories of Middle Earth was a little tricky to kind of like separate, I suppose, um, between each other. I feel like um, the histories of Middle Earth six through twelve is more based around the Third Age, um, around Lord of the Rings era time, kind of like Hobbit, Lord of the Rings. So that one, the histories uh, six through twelve might be either before or after the Lord of the Rings just to kind of have a conclusion in a way because they kind of deal with a lot of the not so much the plot holes but just like the the gap the time gap separations and the reasoning why certain events happen during the third age and whatnot so that's why I kind of like I'm probably planning on it being later almost to the last of the show itself uh, I'm actually really excited to be reading some of the Book of Lost Tales and the, unfi the Unfinished Tales. Uh, very cool stuff. A lot of lore, a lot of um, side, you know, like adventures and whatnot. A lot of extra characters that you can, you know, dump into the history. But, you know, of course that won't happen for a while either. Because <laughs> I'm still going to be uh, centering the show around Silmarillion-based books. So obviously I'll be reading Fall of Numenor first here, and I will be going into Children of Hurin, uh, Fall of Gondolin, and Baron and Luthien. So those four books will for sure be in the near, <laughs> I won't say near future, but it's in sight, pretty much. Uh, as for the other shortened uh, stories, uh, I haven't decided yet, but there are a couple that come to mind, and there are, of course, books I still need to purchase. <laughs> so it's a, a long list, but it's definitely something to look forward to. And I just want to, I guess, just say that I appreciate all of you guys who have listened and watched even and definitely subscribed. Definitely. <laughs> it's really, really cool to see that you guys uh, appreciate what I've been doing on this show. And I just kind of want to start the new year on like a really positive note. <laughs> I'm very excited to see what this show can expand to possibly. Uh, I've had a couple guests on. Hopefully I have a little more. That'd be really fun just to talk about Tolkien. You know, it's, it's just really fun, you know, relaxed uh, channel uh, of mine and groups. It's it's really fun to be part of, uh, you know, the Tolkien, um, I guess, fan group, I suppose. Because <laughs> I still consider myself definitely a fan and not not any, not even close to an expert, I would say. But um, that's kind of the reason why I'm doing this show to begin with, is to expand myself with the knowledge of uh, the <laughs> the histories of Arda. Uh, so I'm very excited with what um, what else can this show bring in this year and and in the probably the many more still to come because it's, I'm gonna this is a very big project so I think you guys um, kind of get the gist of <laughs> everything um, yeah and I don't really have anything else to say other than thank you again and of course as always just stay tuned for another episode and may the light of Elbereth be with you all farewell. Thank you.